I fear we touch on this NIL stuff, which to me has been funny so far. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I don't care that much because the reality is these guys are getting paid anyway. Um, my concern is you pay a guy $7 million, like some of these guys are making millions of dollars. Um, he's probably going to act different than everyone else. It's like, at least you had to be discreet about it before. And I'm sure dudes acted different anyway, like Reggie Bush was a celeb, but like, you're gonna now put pay structures and like the social dichotomy of pay structures into college football, which it wasn't there before. So it's like before you at least have the illusion that everyone's equal on the team, but now that's gone. It's just like the NFL, like, like I promise you Aaron Donald doesn't come into camp and act the same way as everyone else. Like, I mean, some of these guys that make the hundred million up, but it's not, not everyone's held to the same standard when the pay grades are so different. You're also gonna have players that make more than the coaches. Um, so I, they're also, and just think about it, they're younger too. They're younger than, than even when it's like when you're 21 and you get that contract, you're still at a too young of an age really to handle that kind of money. Now you're talking about 17, 18, here's $7 million. You're in a college town. It's just, it just opens uh, a can of worms, I think. Um, but that's just my two cents on it. I think if I were gonna augment what they're doing, I would be like, okay, you get paid when you graduate or you get paid like when you leave the school, when you get drafted, when you don't get drafted, when if you get injured, you get paid. Like I would not give people the money while they're there because it's cool like, I mean, it's happening in the NFL, the contracts, the money, it all takes away from the actual game. Like think about how much damn news you hear about contract talks. It's like, I don't really care how much these players are making. It's weird that we've uh, fixated on it so much. It's a very American thing to fixate on how much money these guys are making. Like it, it shouldn't matter that much. And now there's all this, you know, in the NFL, it's getting taken over where it's like, now it's news if someone who's up for a contract doesn't hold out. It's like, damn, they showed up to camp. It's like crazy. Um, we've like created this, like, I, it's so weird how shit gets, like, it's so weird how shit becomes normal. Like it's normalized now to have this, this like, oh, the player's just protecting himself. He's just looking out. It's like, dude, you, these holdouts and shit mostly are about players' egos. I'm sorry, we were talking about the NILs, but I want to touch on this, like, it's like, I want to be the top player. I want more than this guy. It, it's not like something we really want to start rewarding, in my opinion. Like, oh, he don't worry. He's just got a whole, like, these guys get paid so much money. Like, I don't care. You, you We focus on that they have short careers. Like, they're still going to make more money than 99.9% .9 of people do in that four to eight years. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I can work at the DMV and no hate on the DMV. I can work at... And all these normal jobs, my I, I don't have to worry about my body. I can work at them 40 years, but it's going to take me, you know, 480 years to make what these guys make in two. That's not even like an exaggeration, dude. It's like, I mean, maybe 480 years is over the top, but um, we've just created this idea that these players have to do this stuff to look out for their future and their families. And like, they have to be able to create generation, generational wealth. Like, that's bullshit in my opinion, that sucks to like, that that's become so accepted um, because these dudes make a shit ton of money. Um, and the guys who you should be worried about are the, like the, the bottom of the roster guys in the NFL don't make generational wealth, but they're not the guys holding out. Like the dudes holding out, if you're holding out on an NFL contract, you've made enough money that if you want to be smart with your money, you can live the rest of your life on it. And if you don't, I feel bad for you that you made bad decisions, but you had a chance most people don't have to make a shit ton of money in a short period of time and then do whatever you want. Um, so I would like to stop with this narrative that like this holdout is necessary. It's just looking at like these players buy into that. They see it in the news. So they grow up thinking the same shit. And then when it's their time for the contract, they're like, oh, I'm just looking at, it's like, you can look out for your family with $98 million. It doesn't have to be 110. Um, but that's you know what it's come to and i don't want to see that in college football now where it's like you know it sounds corny and old-fashioned but some old-fashioned shit matters like you know it's cool to see the players play the game i don't i i like to watch the players play the game um it's fun i don't if 
you know, they get paid to be in training camp. I want them to go to training camp. Like I want my, my team to come out looking like a team. Um, they all love each other. They all had to work hard. Like if you play team sports, you know what makes a difference. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, you know, everyone being there makes a difference. You know, people being treated the same makes a difference. Um, so it's like, you know, again, it sounds corny, but that me, me, me shit has really become uh, more tangible in, in, the, in the past probably 10 years or so is when these contracts and like, like a holdout used to be kind of rare. Now it's like everyone holds out every time they can. Like every contract's a holdout. It's it, a contract negotiation is like this hold your breath type of thing. Like, oh shit, are we gonna lose our best player? I mean, even the Dolphins, we just got Tyreek Hill because of some contract dispute. And I was like, I was just like, damn, I can't believe like, you know, these, these Chiefs teams have been incredible. You know, they have one Super Bowl, but they've been so good. Um, it's really crazy to see Tyreek Hill leave that situation um, because of contract disputes. It benefited the Dolphins but you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> as a, as an overall, if I was a Chiefs fan, I would be very, very sad. Um, and it's harder to follow a team now. Um, the NFL is still the best about it. The NBA and the, uh, in the MLB are so much, you know, they've become such mercenaries as far as like the team doesn't really matter at all anymore in those leagues. Um, which is sad, but it's like, you know, the Braves, I'm in Atlanta. The Braves just won a World Series. Freddie Freeman, home drafted player. You know, he was, he's played in Atlanta probably 10 years. He, through their farm system, all this shit. They win a World Series, he's gone. You know, for a big contract in LA. It's like, uh, I get it, but it diminishes the game a little bit when you can't follow players. Because it's like, at the end of the day, dude, that's what we're following. Um, we love our teams, but, you know, people identify with people. You love your celebrities and your stars on your team. I used to be a big Marlins fan. The Marlins organizational philosophy is like, we draft good players, dude. We have two MVPs in the league right now that didn't win MVPs as Marlins because we just get rid of them. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, it's part of it. I'm not trying to be all negative, um, but to see that going to college football is a little alarming, but also, to be fair, and, and this is why I find it funny, it's like the biggest, you know, uh, the biggest uh, detractor of the NIL so far, and, and the guy who's loudest about it has been Nick Saban, which I love, dude. Uh, I respect Nick Saban as what he's done in college football is pretty incredible, but also fuck Nick Saban for how much he's crying about these NILs. Um, the only thing Nick Saban is worried about is now there's a way for people to compete with Alabama with recruiting. Um, and he's probably already, you know, behind the scenes felt that it's harder now. And college football has been less interesting now for like 10 years because it's become a four team sport. You know, it's like, oh, uh, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma. It, these teams have cornered the market per se on recruits. Um, they've perfected whatever systems, however they get these kids. Those four teams have had the best players every year um, for about 10 years now. Um, I'm an FSU fan. We were we won the championship in 2013, 2014. Um, that was really the last time there was parity in college football. Since then, it's been Clemson, Alabama, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio it, it, Georgia. I forgot about Georgia, too. Georgia's because Georgia took. Uh, Kirby Smart, their coach, coach with Saban, he took the Alabama formula and implemented it in Georgia. Um, same region, too. They probably had a lot of the same recruiting ties, um, especially defensively, which you can see um, Alabama shifted to a more of an offensive type of school now. Um, they don't have that lockdown defense they used to have, and Georgia kind of does have that. So that's interesting. But either way, college football has been, in my opinion, not interesting because of these teams being so dominant every single year. Like, I mean, you can really just put money on, okay, I know Bama and Georgia are gonna be in the CFP, um, probably Clemson, probably Ohio State. I would safely put a lot of money on that every year, that at least three of those four teams are gonna be in there. Um, it, I would guarantee Clemson, Ohio State, Bama and Georgia, I would have put any amount of money on at least two of them being in it for the past 10 years. It, and it's just like that. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. 
Uh, it took a little while for Georgia to get there, but um, anyway, yeah, it just has gotten, there was no parity in the league anyway, so maybe this NIL creates a little parity, um, but is it going to even the playing field? Not really. It'll probably just shift it to where, you know, I, I shouldn't say, I don't really know how it's going to look. I have no idea. I have no prediction. But what I imagine is, you know, it's just still going to be a school with the most money. It just might be a way for some schools like USC, who has a shit ton of money, but has been garbage. Maybe they can reset now because they can get some of those top guys to come to USC for a lot of money. Maybe some of those schools can get back to where they were. Um, because, like, look at, I mean, USC and Miami, two schools that have a lot of history um, and a lot of money they've completely become irrelevant, you know? And I guess it's just because uh, a lot of these recruits don't want to like waste their time on a program that's not good at the moment. Cause you know, they're not gonna get as much ex exposure. You know, that's what you sell if you're Alabama, you know, you're gonna be on national TV, you're gonna be in the championship, you're gonna be in the playoffs and you're gonna go to the NFL. Uh, maybe, maybe that's why it's been hard for these schools, but uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens with it. I just don't like, you know, I don't like money being such a dominant topic in sports um, because at the end of the day, these players need to remember they're getting paid to play a game. And that's awesome. Like, if you've ever played sports under the lights and shit, it's fun as hell. Um, and it's more fun than most day jobs. So it's like we're talking about, oh, the things they're putting their body through. Like, there's a lot of people going through a lot of shit on a day-to-day -day basis for their jobs and don't get paid near what a football player gets paid and don't get that kind of, it's not fun to go to work. <laughs> so it's like, I don't get where this like pity party for pro athletes started. I mean, there's definitely situations where a pro athlete, you know, I feel for a lot of these people, but I ain't really gonna have tier. I would rather you make $98 million instead of $110 million and go to training camp so the team is better, you know, it just changes things. It's like, uh, you want to stay in pro sports and I'm not hating on Kyrie. I love Kyrie, but Kyrie spent all season with his personal shit going on with the vaccine. I'm not trying to get into all that. That's for y'all to figure out. But I'm just saying like, look at the Nets who, when Kyrie played every game a year ago, had all this chemistry, like go watch the Nets in the playoffs before Kyrie got hurt. I'm talking about last year. They were fucking crazy. Like, like they would have won the championship easy if Kyrie didn't get hurt. Uh, Milwaukee won the championship. They were up 50 against Milwaukee. They, and then Kyrie got hurt. And then Milwaukee won every game after that. Except maybe one. But it, it was dominant by Milwaukee after that. But then Kyrie this year misses almost the whole season. They have no chemistry. Like, you need your players there is what I'm saying. Brooklyn got bounced in the first round with Kyrie and Kevin Durant on the same team because Kyrie wasn't there. They didn't have that chemistry. He had put his own personal shit ahead of the team. You know, stuff like that, you don't think about it. It sounds like, like, you know, you may say, oh, that definitely had yeah, effect, but it affects it deeply. You know what I'm saying? You need everyone there. You need everyone on the same page. That's what the Bengals had, dude. The Bengals were not the most talented team. Um, no one, anyone's like, oh, look at all, like no one was fucking expecting the Bengals to do what the Bengals did. Um, but they had a very like, uh, you know, they were a heart and soul type of team. You could tell they believe they played hard as fuck. Like that defense, dude, Pete, they don't have stars on that defense. That defense played hard as fuck. Um, you know, they were a team. Um, they're not a lot of big contract guys. They're not a lot of big money guys yet. So we'll see how that changes. The Rams, on the other hand, are the exact opposite. You know, that was that LA team uh, with tons and tons of money. And that worked out. But the Rams also have a phenomenal coach who I think keeps that team atmosphere there. I think uh, Sean McVay is a special coach. They've been really competitive every year he's been their head coach. Um, and look at Jared Goff, like no hate on Jared Goff. I'm not a hater, dude. He's a great player. Like he's just not that great of an NFL quarterback right now. But he was able to make it to a Super Bowl. And, Look at him last year on the Lions. Like, they're not a great team. They're a bad team, whatever, whatever. He fucking sucked. Like, no hate on Jared Goff. But I'm just saying, like, look at the difference of what Sean McVay is coaching and how he built a system around a player like Goff. Um, 
And look at Goff everywhere he's been without Sean McVay. Look at Goff's first, I mean, he had one of the worst rookie years ever with uh, Jeff Fisher, who's not a great coach, but wasn't a horrible coach. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, the Rams, I think, were able to make it work because of a coach like that. Um, you know, who can maybe take those rich, big money personalities and get them all unified. Um, but yeah, we were talking about the NIL. I don't know, it, you know, I get sidetracked. If you watch this, it's going to get sidetracked a lot. We're here just kind of to talk about sports. Um, we ain't going to be, you know, running on a, we're talking about this and then this and then this, and then we're going to finish up with this. Like, I kind of want to come from an angle of like, look, like, we all like to talk about sports. Like, let's actually just talk about it. Um, and I don't want, like, again, a lot of my favorite podcasters, I love them, but they're very, they become so professional. It's like, I want to hear some real talk about this shit sometimes. Like, you know, I'm a Dolphins fan. I don't want to necessarily hear, I kind of want to hear how it is, dude, because I don't have time to, to do all the research myself anymore. And we used to do all, like, you read all the Dolphins articles and like, you, you read any team's news and art, you're going to think you're about to watch the best team in football every year. Um, so it's nice to have some real talk about it. This contract stuff is some stuff I really wanted to talk about just because like, um, it's just changed the perception of it so much. It's like, it used to be hold out, you're an asshole for not being there with your team. Now it's like, oh, they're just looking out for their family. And that's just ridiculous to me. Um, you know, it, it just is because it's like, who is educating, who is telling these players that $98 million isn't enough to look out for your family? Like that's, that's where my disconnect is. Um, and I just hope that it changes so sports can be about sports and not money. Cause it's going to be hard to like, you know, you just, you're just going to lose people. You're going to lose fans. Uh, and you want to just keep sports about sports, you know, you want to keep it about sports and, and sports is an amazing thing. You get to see a lot of human emotion. You get to see a lot of, uh, you know, battles, triumphs, um, you know, trials, tribulations, however you want to put it. Uh, you get to see a lot of narratives play out over the course of a sports season. Um, there's nothing cool about not watching a player play because he wants more money. Like that's, that's just, that's, I guess, like the basis of my argument is there's nothing cool about a contract holdout. There's nothing entertaining about a contract holdout. I don't care about him making this much money opposed to this much money. It's not coming from bitterness. I just think this has really gotten out of hand where it's almost like, oh, he's doing, he's just looking out for his family. It's like, come on, dude, like, let's not be stupid about it. You know, it's, it's to a certain point being greedy. Um, and I think it's getting better. I, this off season, actually, I saw a lot of players just kind of like DK Metcalf just signed an extension. Um, no holdout. There wasn't a lot of talk. There was a lot of, uh, extensions that got done um without holdouts Debo Samuel had threatened to hold out he just got an extension done um I'm happy when these guys get paid I want them to get paid I want them to make their money um that I'm not on the other side of that argument where they shouldn't get like what pro athletes do is they entertain a lot of people and entertainment's very valuable you know what I'm saying like there's very few things to me as entertaining as a pro football game so you gotta understand too like that shit isn't as entertaining if they're not as good. Like what these guys do at the level they do it is why it's entertaining. You know, go watch, even college football, go watch like just lesser football teams and you'll understand the value of like Debo Samuel, dude. Like you'll understand Alvin Kamara, like, like how good these guys are is why we watch this stuff. It's not just, oh, anyone can play basketball. Go watch college basketball compared to the NBA finals. Um, you know, college basketball is amazing too. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, throw anyone under the bus, but I like watching the best of the best. So I, I get it. I'm not saying these guys should get paid a lot of money. I, I like that. I like that about our pro sports. I'm just saying that we got to like dial it back a little bit with, you know, oh, it's okay. Like, you know, he's just looking out for his family. I'm just tired of that narrative of like, he's looking like anyone holding out on a contract if they're not like absolutely ridiculously stupid with their money, should be able to take care of like four families for the next hundred years. Like they'll, they'll be fine. Um, yeah. And, and two, it's like, uh, we're not even thinking about once you're a pro at, once you're making that kind of money, you got like uh, avenues for income the rest of your life too. You've got connections. You're pretty much set. Um, 
So yeah, I just hope that doesn't crawl into college football. You know, like, I guess like with the NIL, you can get to deal with holdouts and shit. Um, but it'll be interesting. It'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, that's at least something that it'll be interesting. Um, and I hope for parody's sake that it hurts Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Clemson. I hope, you know, I hope these teams have to suffer a little bit from, you know, it's just boring. I'm tired of watching Alabama be the best team every year. I'm really tired of it. Um, same with Ohio State. And and I'm tired. I, it, hopefully it, it evens things out. I just don't think, I guess my prediction would be it's going to even things out in it might just switch up the teams that are dominant. Um, but maybe, you know, actually, honestly, if I really honestly, without cynicism, had to guess is that it will help things. Um, I think you'll be looking at maybe 10 teams that dominate, but there's more parity amongst those 10 teams. Because right now it's Alabama and Georgia. Even Clemson's fallen off, even Ohio State's fallen off, just in a sense they've fallen off that much where they're, you know, Clemson doesn't have a quarterback now. You see what, how much that matters. Clemson doesn't have a quarterback, and now they're a beatable, pretty average team. Um, but, you know, it's like Alabama's got, you know, Alabama's three deep at court. Alabama had Jalen Hurts, Mac Jones. Alabama had three NFL starters on the roster at one time. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, that's probably all we're going to touch on today. Um, I'm going to get more into the Dolphins maybe next episode. Um, but yeah, well, I'm just here to talk about real talk sports. Um, I didn't want to title it something like that. Cause so many people have taken like real talk, like it's become Stephen A. Smith, like, and no hate on him either. Like he's kind of funny. Um, but everyone's just there to throw shade. I'm not here to throw shade. Um, I just, I, I'll throw shade at like Stephen A. Smith and shit. Cause like, I really don't even, I'm just kidding around. Um, but yeah, we're just here to talk about it. But yeah, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna do more of these, whether or not anyone watches them or not. It's it's fun to talk about sports. So bye.